Now let's get back to our example of the XOR, in which we are going to try to create a multiple layer perception, which are otherwise in neural networks, that actually uses, uh, produces the XOR function using elementary perceptrons. And these elementary perceptrons will be the and, the or, the not and, the not, etc. We'll see what we need. All right. So the next step would be to uh, first, first of all, let's observe that uh, the, for the function g, uh, the function g is one divided by e minus z, and we observe that g of ten is close to one, and g of minus ten is close to one. So we need to have this two value that shows us whenever the function is actually reaching one and when it is reaching uh, zero. So let's consider that actually for any z bigger than one g of z will tend to 1. And for any z less than, uh, than or equal than minus 1, g of z will have a limit of 0. So first of all, what is the perception of the OR? So remember, we, have, we just did uh, the example of the OR, and we know that the step function allows us to um, classify um, the examples in the OR table. We can also do, do it with the, the new function, the new squashing function g, which is our sigmoid. So let's see how we can define the weights using um, the, um, the sigmoid function. So you have a similar table that's just like we have seen, x1, x2. We have the OR between the two values. So I'm going to build an, a perception in which g is actually the uh, sigmoid function of the weighted sum uh, of the feature values for uh, all dimension d. So we want to be able to produce uh, the OR, which means whenever we introduce 0, 0, we get as outcome 0. If we introduce 0, 1, we get as output 1. And this will help us train the algorithm to find uh, the weights. So here the weights are, are straightforward. What we can do, given that we know that um, uh, we're going to um, have for any value less than minus 10, we're going to uh, have g converge to 0. For any value 10 or more, we're going to have g converges to plus, uh, 2 plus 1. So what we can do is to actually uh, replace this uh, g of z here as the g of the weighted sum. So we have w0 plus w1 x1, w2 x2. Here, both of these two values are 0, so which means that g of w0 will be equal to, uh, should be equal to 0, which would be represented here by g of minus 10. Uh, we do the same thing in this second case, and we're going to have um, the value 1 would be g of 10. And we're going to figure out ways that are actually giving us uh, this uh, 0, 1, 1, 1 here. So in other words, um, if we take in other words, if I take the second case, it would be g of well, g of w0 plus uh, w1x1 would be 0 plus w2x2. And w2x2 is 1, so there is no need to keep uh, this value here. So plus w2, g of w0 plus w2 equal to, should be equal to 1, right? So uh, for this to be um, uh, true, we have to have w0 plus w1 equal uh, to 10. Uh, w0, we know it's minus 10 from the previous uh, 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 line, which means that we have minus 10 plus w1 equal 10, which will lead us to w1. Uh, possibility would be w1 equal 20. Okay, we do the same thing uh, at this level and at this level, and we get the weights for the connections between the neuron 1, the bias, neuron x1, which is the first feature value, neuron x2, which is the second feature value. All right, so uh, in this case, what we're going to do is to um, this function here would be um, equal to, to what? It's a g of minus 10 plus 20x1 plus 20x2, um, which would be the sigmoid function, which is what? 1 divided by 1 plus e to the minus uh, of minus 10 plus 20x1 plus 20x2. So if we try it, we'll see that actually this would classify correctly all of the examples by using this um, the sigmoid functions of the weighted input of the uh, using this uh, way that we just learned. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing to um, learn other functions. Similarly, we could get the perceptions of the and and not and, and this perception would look like this. So the not and has the weights minus 30, 20, 20, but there are other possibilities, of course. We just pick that we're going to consider g of minus 10 is equal to 0 and g of 10 equal to 1. So um, note that the weights in the not and are just the inverse of the weights in the, in the end. All right? So next, we're going to write the, the, our x or functions using elementary functions. So x1 or x or x2 could be written as what? As x1 on x one or x2 and x1, not and of x2. So if you comp compare these two functions here, you will see that they have exactly the same output, and they are equivalent. So a proof by truth table will show that actually these two functions are equivalent, which means that building the perception of 
XOR is actually building the combinations of the perceptrons of the OR, the AND, and NOT AND. So here we are combining with an AND the perceptron of the OR and the NOT AND. If you put them together, we're going to get this uh, XOR combination of the three basic perceptrons, the AND, the OR, and the NOT AND, corresponding to the previous table. So if you want to write the answer for a given input, uh, so the answer would be something that actually uh, is a G, is a sigmoid function of what? Of minus 30 times this bias. Uh, times 1 plus 20, the weight of this, um, this connection here, 20 of what? Of some, uh, actually a G of something, right? Um, then plus 20 of what? Of a G of the end, right? So this would represent actually, uh, this would represent the, the OR and this would represent the not end. So what is the, actually, what is the OR? The OR is simply the, uh, the result of this function here would be g of what? g of minus 10 times 1 plus 20x1 plus 20x2. And the output for the function of NAND would be um, g of what? Of 30 minus 20x1 minus 20x2. So this is how we would uh, get the answer for any um, input, which would be the, exam the training example given here. Uh, we would use these weights to calculate the outcome, the final outcome G, which is the, the, the output, what we call here the output layer, right? In this case, we're going to call this layer here the input layer. This is our examples. In other words, features, and in, in this case, it features on the left side, and the output would be the prediction or the label, right? All right, so we use this function to make the prediction, and this works for the XOR uh, function. This is how we solve that for the XOR. So now, how do we learn the weights? We have seen that for the XOR with some tricks about the limits of the function, the sigmoid function, it's possible to uh, find the weights, to cover you know, uh, good weights for the learning algorithm. So I need to clarify first the difference between what we call a feed-forward neural network as opposed to recurrent network. A uh, recurrent network uh, has connections or loops, uh, well, however, our feed-forward neural network that we talk about, the one with the different layers, is called the feed-forward neural network. It doesn't have a loop. Uh, we use what we call backpropagation. That stands for backward propagations of errors to learn the weights. So we're going to learn the weights for a multi-layer network. Uh, given the network architecture with a fixed architecture, um, you need, which means that we have the units or the neurons and we have the interconnections. We're going to use, again, the gradient descent to minimize the squared error between the network output uh, on the right side, which is the output layer, and the input layer, uh, which is the values of the features. So we suppose that we have multiple uh, output k. It could be multi-classification. And the challenge is then to search for the all possible weight values for all the units in the network to find the best uh, weighting of the, uh, this architecture that would lead us to uh, minimize this, um, this, this squared error of the, of the training data.